Welcome to the latest episode of 50 Forward Exchange, a video series produced by Nashville nonprofit 50 Forward. The goal of 50 Forward Exchange is to discuss ideas or topics that are important to the older adult community. I'm Kristen Maloney, the Director of Care Management at 50 Forward. Thanks for joining us today. It's my pleasure to welcome our guest, Barbara Moss. Barbara is the founder of Elder Law of Nashville, and she's been practicing in Nashville for over 30 years. Barbara's practice focuses on elder law, conservatorships, probate, estate planning, Medicare and Medicaid issues. Barbara has served on our board of directors, and she has supported 50 Forward and the work that we do for many years. Thank you so much for being here, Barbara. We're so glad to have you. Thank you for asking me. You clearly work in a very special um, and particular kind of law. So for those who don't know, what is elder law? Well, estate planning is planning for what happens to your stuff when you die. But elder law is about helping our clients, our seniors, have their very best life while they're alive. So, um, and to put it another way, it's it's really the only specialty of law that's defined by the age of the clients we serve. Um, although it doesn't say um, this, we also help people with their children who have disabilities. Okay. But generally, elder law consists of estate planning, like I said, but then um, helping people with income, with assets, uh, helping them afford health care, getting Social Security, getting Medicare, getting housing, getting, you know, reviewing housing contracts, getting Medicare insurance, getting long-term care insurance, helping with Medicaid, other kinds of public benefits like veterans benefits, conservatorships, and probate. So it's a very broad specialty. Like you, 50 Forward supports older adults and we often talk about planning for the future. So what kind of planning do older adults need to think about that might involve an attorney? Well, the first thing they need to plan for is decision making. Who's gonna help us make decisions if we become incapacitated? And um, that, that breaks down into two categories. Who's gonna help make decisions about finances? and who's gonna help us make decisions about health care. So finances, people need to think about who they want to help them, and then they need to um, do a power of attorney. And it's often called a durable power of attorney yeah. because our law comes from England. And in England, if you got kicked in the head by a cow and went into a coma, your power of attorney disappeared. So lawyers draft what's called a durable power of attorney for finances to, um, to say who's going to help you with your financial decisions. Then people need to think about, well, who's going to help me with my health care decisions? And again, they need a durable power of attorney. And the final category is we need to put into writing our decisions about end-of-life care because the three most famous cases in America about people who needed to have in writing what they wanted at the end of their lives were women in their 20s. Oh, wow. They were all women in their 20s who became brain dead. People will remember Terry Schiavo. So you need to have those decisions about end of life care in some kind of document. Another thing that seniors need to think about is how will they afford health care in retirement? Yes. 65% of people that reach the age of 65 are going to need some type of long-term care services. 40% of us are going to need to stay in a nursing home that's heavily weighted towards women. So we need to think about how can we afford to pay for health care in retirement. We need to think about something called life care planning which is not only how to afford health care, but how to find and access health care. Okay. And so um, some lawyers that do elder law do life care planning, which means I have a social worker that works for us, and she will manage the care of our clients. 
She's the care manager for our clients. And finally, people need to plan for what happens to their stuff when they die, the estate planning part of it. Out of some of that, it does sound like older adults need to make some choices now and as opposed to waiting. So maybe those that power of attorney that you're talking about and um, the, did you say, oh, life? Life care plan. Life care plan, yeah. Right. So it sounds like that, th those kinds of things need to kind of start on those immediately and don't wait on those, right? It's, it's good. Um, you know, we all know when we get a divorce that we need to go see a lawyer, <laughs> yes. you know? We know when we have young children, mm -hmm. we need to have something set up so that if both parents die, they'll be taken care of. Sometime when you're getting ready to retire, you really need to think about the planning and okay. go see a lawyer about the planning. Okay. You know, if you wait, we see plenty of people who've waited until a crisis, but sure. it's better if you go ahead of time so that you're not so overwhelmed if a crisis happens. Okay. Well, that's good to know um, and good information to have. Um, so what are some of the legal mistakes that people make as they get older? Well, we pretend that we're never going to die, <laughs> and there's no possibility that sure. we'll ever be disabled. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not a person that tells a lot of jokes, but there's one I like to tell. <laughs> okay. There are a couple of prisoners waiting to be executed, and they're standing next to the gallows, and they've got the hoods over their heads. Mm -hmm. And one of them nudges the other one and says, you know, this really is worse than public speaking. So, and the only reason that's funny is that of course it's worse than public right. speaking. <laughs> only in America where right. we have said, oh, it's worse. Public speaking is worse than dying. I'd yeah. rather be uh, in the coffin than giving the <laughs> eulogy. So um, it's best not to wait. It's mm -hmm. best not to wait to sure. check with somebody about these planning uh, subjects. Okay. So I can imagine that a lot of this can seem overwhelming for many. Um, what can you tell older adults who, like you said, just haven't even started thinking about it or are scared to think about planning for the future and what happens to their home when they die and who's gonna take care of, of those decisions if they can't make them? What, what can you say to those people? Well, first of all, our tagline is planning for peace of mind. I don't think we really believe we're not going to die. Sure. I think we're fooling ourselves, and we know deep down that we need to be planning. So, first of all, you're going to feel better yeah. if you do that planning. Um, second of all, think about who you want to help you. Um, if you don't have anyone, there are what we call orphan adults, we can help you with that too. Okay. We can help you find people that can help you if you become unable to make decisions. Um, how are you going to afford health care? Have you thought about that? And uh, what, what do you want to happen to your stuff? And you know, I, I think that all of us um, really deep down want to make it easier for our children. Yeah. You know? and. And my, my dad is 99 years old. Oh, wow. My mom died with dementia in her 80s. My dad is 99. We say, Dad, which one do we get? <laughs> <laughs> right? But, but in my dad's generation, you didn't talk to your family sure. about any of these decisions. But these decisions, none of the paperwork can take the place of having meaningful conversations with your family sure. about what you want. That's such a good point. You know, I think, you know, my family and I'm with my parents, I, I have definitely talked to them about, you know, what do you want? So um, I think, I think you're right. It, it's, it's a different time. And so it's okay to have these conversations. It's you know, not we, pleasant, but necessary. We, we read an interesting story. Um, my staff and I and 47 law students at the National oh School of Law are reading a book called Being Mortal. Oh my gosh, I've read that it's book. It's a great yeah, book. Yeah, it's a good book. A it, book. it really is, yeah. <laughs> anyway, there's a story about um, a daughter who asked her father, what would be okay with you as you decline? And he said, as long as I can watch football and eat chocolate ice cream, I'll be okay. Yes. Now, this man had never watched football. He wasn't a football kind of watching guy. He was an academic. But she knew, as this process was unfolding, that as long as her dad could eat chocolate ice cream mm -hmm. and watch football, that he wanted to stay there with her. Yeah. So that conversation can be just so valuable. Yeah. 
I agree. Yeah. I definitely agree. Um, I know that we have barely scratched the surface today, but what is the most important thing that you can tell people as they age and begin to think about planning for the future? Don't try to do it on your own. There's a lot of do-it-yourself yes. in our country. If we could yes. prescribe medication for ourselves, we probably would. <laughs> right. But um, this this one really does take a law degree, you know. Yeah. And um, what I want people to know that in our law office, um, we saw a book by an author a year ago, and this is so meaningful to us. We're all just walking each other home. And I know that's what 50 Forward believes too. Yes. We're all just walking each other home. Yes. Come see us. Come see another lawyer. Yes. We're all just walking each other home. That's so, yes, that's it, that statement right there. I love it, I love it, it's a little heartwarming. Um, so as we wrap up, I just wanna say that we are so grateful for you, we're grateful for the work that you do um, with everyone and particularly with older adults in this particular lane. Um, and I just wonder if you have a final thought or two that you wanna share. Um. 50 Forward is a wonderful organization. Thank you. 50 Forward is a wonderful organization. And um, I'm so happy to do this for you guys. And, um, and you know, in a way, I was a litigator for many years. <laughs> and um, what I love about, and a single mom. Oh, wow. And what I love about my work is taking people's anxiety away. Well, I am sure that you do that especially well. Um, just being open to having these conversations and, and just even having this conversation with you now has kind of lessened mine, you know, a little bit. Just normalizing the conversation, I think, and normalizing the process and just explaining a little bit about, about how things can be done is definitely very helpful. So thank you so okay. much. I really appreciate it. Thanks to you for watching this episode of 50 Forward Exchange. We hope that you can take some ideas and thoughts and turn them into action. We'll see you soon.